Welcome to another lecture of embryology. In this video, we'll talk about the week three of embryonic development and the events that happens during the week three. During the week three of embryonic development, major events happen. So at the end of week two, the blastocyst had embedded into the endometrium completely. So in, in this at around day 14 to 15, we can see the chorionic cavity has formed and the bi, uh, bilaminar embryonic disc is hanging in the chorionic cavity with the help of primitive stalk, which would be the future umbilical cord. Now the major event that happens during day 16 or the third week of embryonic development is gastrulation. And this process is basically helping the embryo to form multiple germ layers, namely the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm from the epiblast layer. Now, gastrulation is a process by which different parts of the different cells of the embryo moves into new location and forms a different type of cells. So there are different morphogenetic movement that happens, like invagination, where cells move inward, invaginates a sheet of cells invaginate inside. Involution, where one layer of cells uh, grows inside another defined layer. There is ingression, delamination, and epiboli. If you want to learn more about these morphogenetic movement, you can click on the different video in the I button. Right now, we are not going to talk about these in details, but let me tell you the key features of gastrulation. Gastrulation is all about coordinated movement of cells. And these movements involve the entire embryo. And the patterns of gastrulation is very different among animal kingdom. But gastrulation would be a set of movement, which are a combination of these basic morphogenetic movements. There could be a combination of, let's say, invagination, in, in ingression, and epiboli together, just to give you one example. But all the possible movements are not happening together. A combination is taking place for a given organism. Now, here is the human embryo. Here we can see the epiblast and we can see the hypoblast here. The cavity inside the epiblast is amniotic cavity and here we can see the yolk sac. Now, let us focus on this particular region, the bilaminar embryonic disc. We have to understand this to understand the third week of development which is comprising of, I mean, the bilaminar embryonic disc is comprising of epiblast and the hypoblast layer. Gastrulation involves highly choreographed movement of these epiblast cells over time. Eventually, these epiblast cells would give rise to three different lineages of cell, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So in, in a 3D situation, imagine this embryo is hanging through the primitive, streak, primitive stalk in the uh, chorionic cavity. You can see the amniotic cavity and yolk sac just to orient you in this situation. And the bilaminar embryonic disc is shown here. So the first event that happens in the embryonic development is a thickening throughout the midline of the em uh, embryo along the mid sagittal plane. And this is known as the primitive streak. And this primitive streak grow grows over the course of the next day. And this primitive, at the end of this primitive streak, in the cranial end, there is a groove which forms. This is known as the primitive groove. So at this point of time, the major body axis is defined. You can see the cranial and the caudal end is well defined at the end of this stage. Formation of the primitive streak also indicates the beginning of the gastrulation process. So formation of the primitive streak is very important because it defines the major body axis. Here we can see at the cranial end, there would be a primitive node. So the primitive node has a depression in it, which is known as the primitive pit. Cells move through the primitive streak inside and away from that, which is known as a, a particular morphogenetic movement known as ingression. So during the gastrulation, what happens is cells move towards the primitive streak, move down through the primitive streak and move inside the primitive streak. 
Now at this particular illustration, it might not be very visual. So let us explain that in a bit more details. In a cross section, you can see the cellular movement through the help of the arrows. You can see the cells are moving through the primitive streak, going down and moving away from the primitive streak. This is even better visualized in this kind of graphic. Cells are moving towards primitive streak, moving down through the primitive streak and moving away. And when they are moving away, they would eventually get a new fate. And this kind of set of coordinated movement is known as ingression. So they, de they delaminate from one side and they eventually move to a new destination and become something else. So here we can see uh, one important structure in the cranial end, which is known as pro or precordial plate. This particular structure would eventually give rise to the oropharyngeal membrane, which ruptures to form the mouth. And it makes sense, right? In the cranial end, we would see the mouth opening. So it defines the cranial end as well. Anyway, this precordial or procordial plate also provide inductive signal for the CNS formation or the neural tube closure. So what forms the primitive streak? The induction of primitive streak happens with the help of several signaling molecules like TGF beta, Wnt, Bracuri, and the opposing gradient of Cerberus and Lefty. So this defines the primitive groove and primitive streak formation and ultimately induce the ingression movement of the epiblast cells. So what really happens after the cells of epiblast ingresses inside? The cells of epiblast eventually replaces the cells of the hypoblast and ultimately this would form the definitive endoderm and this is happening at the early stage of day 16. Eventually more cells would move in and the intraembryonic mesoderm would be formed between the endoderm and the so-called epiblast layer. After the intraembryonic mesoderm is formed there are no more requirement of ingressing, ingressing cells. So the cells which are lagged behind and not anymore ingressing, they would form the ectodermal region. So this is the last region to be formed, ectoderm. So now at the end of day 16, ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm has been formed. Now we enter the early stage of day 17. Within the mesoderm tissue, there is a formation of notochordal process. But just to orient you, this is the oropharyngeal membrane, cranial end, and this is the cloacal membrane, that means it's the caudal end. You can see the embryo is more thickened or more bulky on the uh, cranial side and tapering at the uh, uh, caudal side. At this point of time, we can appreciate the growth of the notochordal process. Notochordal process would eventually grow and form the notochord. Notochord first of all give rise to the vertebrae and eventually secretes molecules which triggers the induction of neural plate. So neural, neural induction is one of the key event that ha happens at the end of the third week. In this process notochord secretes molecules like sonic hedgehog out of many molecules which help the uh, induction of uh, ectodermal region to form the neuroectoderm. Eventually, that neuroectoderm form, uh, uh, folds to form the neural tube. So imagine the entire ectoderm to be a thin sheet. And during the process of neurulation, this sheet is folding and forming a tube-like organization. If you look at the circle region, you can clearly understand the sheet is folding and forming a tube. And that's what happens at the end of the third week of gestation. So as per summary, we can say, Gastrulation was the most important event during the third week of gestation and it involves coordinated movement which results in formation of three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm from the epiblast. Eventually, these uh, germ layers would give rise to several regions such as ectoderm would give rise to CNAs, brain, skin, adrenal medulla for example. Mesoderm would give rise to kidney, bone, heart, spleen, etc. Endoderm would give rise to GI tract, endocrine system, bladder, urethra, etc. Anyway, just to recap, what happens in the third week? First, primitive streak defines the beginning of the third week. It also marks the major body axis. Then one of the major events that happens is the gastrulation, which forms three different germ layers. At the end of day 16 and the transition of day 17 notochordal process starts to form at the end of day 17 notochord is formed 
and neural tube induction happens in between day 19 to day 21 and that ends the third week of embryonic development so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up follow us on facebook and instagram support us using super thanks you can pay via paypal paytm or upi see you in next video